Dan, great pleasure to have joining us today, man, who has uh, written really an interesting book, or a unique topic, too. It's called The Great Animal Orchestra, Finding the Origins of Music in the World's Wild Places. We're joined today by uh, Dr. Bernie Krauss. And, uh, uh, Bernie, thanks for joining us today. I had a chance to uh, read through the book uh, last week, and uh, a really a fascinating topic. I, I know for the people that may not be aware, you, you were um, or are or were a musician as well, but you kind of devoted yourself to recording the music of animals. That's kind of an interesting uh, switch for you, isn't it? Well, you know, it all came about through music, and I was very curious how we learn to dance and sing. And uh, after uh, working in studios and working in, um, uh, you know, in offices for so long, I just decided I wanted to work outside to try to find a way to do that and make a living at it. And, uh, and in the process of recording these natural sounds, I came across many groups that were living uh, still living very close to the natural world, unlike us. They live in the forest, and they live off the forest. And when they sang, like in Africa or in the Amazon or in Indonesia, rainforests in Indonesia like Borneo, when they sang, I noticed that, that they sang um, using the sounds of the forest as a, like a backup band, mm -hmm. as a natural karaoke orchestra with which they performed. They didn't perform separate from it. There's no ego involved, like, you know, I'm a musician. They performed because it was part of the life cycle that they found themselves involved in. I know just, uh, you know, growing up, I grew up in New York, but uh, in the summertime, you go outside and, and, and you hear the sounds of, uh, you know, crickets sometimes, you hear the, the, the birds. I mean, if you really pay attention, uh, there's a rhythmic sound to what the animals uh, sounds that they make, and I guess from you know, your travels, you're really getting to hear some different type of animal songs, but I mean, there is a rhythm to nature, isn't there? Absolutely, and there's not only rhythm to nature, there's melody to nature, and there's structure to natural sound, and it's the structure that, I, that I've discovered uh, in natural soundscapes that is the basis for our orchestration and the way we put music together, the musical sounds together. Think about, it for, think about it for a second. If an instrument is to be heard, it better be in a range where its voice can be heard. Otherwise, what's the point? It's just going to be mass. Mm. Talk a little bit about how you, you, you kind of, I mean, you've been doing this a while. Uh, now, Obviously now the recording equipment is much better. Did, did you literally go out there? I, I think from reading your book, you went out there with a, a whole reel-to-reel -reel tape, didn't you, originally? Or, or tape cassettes? Or how did you do it originally? Well, you know, it, it, it's interesting. You can, you can think about this in scale of pounds. Uh, when I used to go, go out and record in 1987 uh, for a month, I used to have to take 170 pounds of equipment with me in order to do that. Now we can do it with less than 10 pounds yeah. of digital. It's really amazing. And the stuff is a fraction of the cost, and it's much better quality, and you can record for much longer period. You talk in the book about some uh, unusual sounds that the different uh, animals can make. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that uh, you talk about beavers. Uh, they, they actually cry, right? They have a kind of interesting uh, way of, of, of making noise. And, and also whales. Uh, we all heard like whale noises or whales singing to each other, but th that's kind of interesting. Can you talk about uh, a couple of the interesting sounds that you've heard? Well, sure. The, the beaver that you're talking about, uh, I didn't know that beavers made noise that sounded like crying. Um, I didn't either. I didn't know they made any noise at all except with the tails. <laughs> well, they clap their tails, of course, yeah. but, but they also grunt a little bit, typically. They have some kind of grunting vocalization. But a friend of mine was recording in Minnesota, and uh, he'd been recording at this lake for many years. And, and three years ago, uh, he was sitting at this lake recording. It was very remote and always had been very beautiful. Uh, at one end where the outlet was with this beaver dam that created this whole wonderful environment. And three years ago, uh, while he was sitting there during the day, um, uh, a couple of fish and wildlife guys came in, dropped a couple of sticks of dynamite down the beaver dam and blew up the dam, killing the female and the pups. Mm. And uh, this wounded male beaver, he recorded this wounded male beaver swimming in circles around this 
on that evening with the frogs going on in the background and crying out in a way I've never heard before. I tell you, this was the saddest sound I've ever heard in my life. And I'm talking about forget music or forget anything that I ever This was really sad. Oh. Wow. That's, uh, it, it's an animal expressing emotion. You don't normally we think of that, yeah. That animal is only... Well, we scientists are very afraid of, of talking about emotion with right. animals because you can't measure it. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a sad story, but it's, it's, it's fascinating to know that animals uh, have that ability to, to do that. Yes, uh, they sure do. Yeah. They're not the only ones, of course. No, no. So a little bit, uh, you have some terminology in the book I thought was kind of interesting. You, you talk about, uh, if I pronounce it correctly, biophony. Is, is that the sound of uh, animals? Exactly right. What's happening is here, you know, the soundscape, think of the soundscape as the landscape. Landscape, we have, you, you, you look at sources of what you see. You see a rock, you see trees, you see grasses, and so on, you see hills. That's, those are the sources of what we see in a landscape. Soundscape is the same thing. It has sources of sound. So we have to define what those sources are. And there are three of them. The first is the geophony, meaning earth, sound, geo, sound, tone. And, uh, and what that is, is just like wind in the trees and grasses and waves of the ocean, water running by in the stream. And then we, that's the first and original sound before any living organisms were on earth. And then... When living organisms appeared, the biology or the biota of the, of the Earth, uh, all of these living creature, critters create sound as well. They create a sound signature. So we needed to define that. So that is bio, meaning life, and phone, meaning sound, the sounds of living organisms. Uh, and so that's the biophony. And finally, the, the anthrophony, anthro meaning human. And that's all the noise humans make. You also have a, a chapter in the book, and, and I agree with this. I grew up growing up in New York. is it is a noisy place to live, but you talk about the, the health effects of, uh, of you know, good noise and bad noise and, and, and no noise at all. Uh, that was kind of interesting. Can you explain that a little bit? Sure. Um, we, have to, we have to live, in, but those of us who can hear, of course, we have to live in, a, in an environment that puts out some kind of noise. We can't exist without any noise whatsoever. So there's always some ambient level of noise that, we're, that we feel or sense, even if there's no other noises around there. Like in, if we're in a room, for instance, all rooms put out some kind of noise unless, they're, unless they have no reverberation in them whatsoever. So we have to live in a world that is tranquil. Not, but when we put chaotic noise in it, like random human noise, car horns and traffic and stuff like that. I, like you, grew up in the city. I grew up in Detroit and New York. And uh, what I found was that the noise was always very stressful to me. And, um, and when I moved to the country where we are now, and I opened up the we live on 10 acres in Northern California, and when I open up the window and hear the sounds of the evening or the sounds of the morning, it's very calming to me. It, it, and as a matter of fact, it's cured my ADHD. Really? Yeah. I know it is. It isn't silence that you want when you want to uh, relax. It's it's comfortable noise or comfortable sounds. That's correct. I think that's the, the key. People don't want you don't want to be in a room with absolutely no sound at all. They drive you nuts. <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> well, I know we have limited time today, uh, Bernie, but I, I want to give the folks a chance to. to to hear you a little bit, and uh, the name of the book is called The Great Animal Orchestra, Finding the Origins of Music in the World's Wild Places. Uh, uh, Bernie, uh, give out a website, people get a hold of the book, or maybe send you a message if they like. It's Amazon.com, and uh, for the book, uh, The Great Animal Orchestra, and uh, if you want to join our website, it's www.wildsanctuary.com. Great. Well, Bernie, appreciate you taking a few minutes today, and uh, look forward to talking to you again down the road, and uh, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Doug.